NSFW, what's the best thing that happened to you in truth or dare? Story 1. Ask Susan, not her real name, out on stage tomorrow during assembly, you want. Susan BTW was my crush through high school. She was top of our class and one of the fastest swimmers on our team which I was also part of myself and hella gorgeous. Basically ask out your crush who is every single high school dude's dream girl. I did. In front of the whole school. It was embarrassing as hell. She walked off of stage on me half the audience laughed at me for my stupidity, and I was crushed but as a man of my word I had to follow the dare which my friends didn't expect me to actually do. The rest of the day I received a mix of jeers at my expense and pity at my rejection and I just felt defeated knowing full well what I'd just done over a stupid dare. But after school while I was still reeling she met me and to my great surprise she accepted. We dated for two years before we had to split for college. Story 2. So I have two. I have a group of friends in school who often play truth or dare during class. A friend was dared to take off her bra, which she did under her shirt. Little did she know, her shirt allowed for her nipples to be seen through and no one pointed that out until much later. When she realized, she hid under the table and took her shirt off before putting on her bra and her shirt back again. I managed to see a nipple under the table. This happened while we were 16 BTW. The other one happened back in 7th grade. I was playing with a very small group of friends, including my crush and her sister on my house. The sister went for some water and came back with a nice cup. She tripped and the water drenched my little crush. Nothing was poking out, her shirt was just wet. She then went to the bathroom to change into her little vest she had and nothing else while her clothes dried out. When the time came, she had to put her clothes back on and headed to do so to the bathroom again. However, she forgot her now dry clothes and asked me to hand them to her. When I went to the bathroom, she was completely topless and didn't seem to care much. While this wasn't a dare, it happened during truth or dare so I guess it counts. Anyway, I later learned she also had a crush on me and that's probably why she did it. We later became a couple and lasted for about a month. Cool times. Story 3. So bear with me here. I've wanted to tell this story for years. The truth or dare comes in at the end, but the context is what really makes the story in my mind. It was my 18th birthday. I was the baby of my class with a summer birthday, so my 18th was right in the midst of graduation party season. Everyone was excited about college and trying to soak up as much time as they could with friends before moving away that fall. I was also freshly out of a toxic long-term relationship that I had stayed in for most of high school. My ex-girlfriend was jealous and controlling, but she was my first girlfriend and I had no context for what a healthy relationship was, so we didn't break up until shortly before I graduated. Over the past two years I have let her slowly pull me away from my friends. Eventually, I hardly spent any time with them outside of school. Not to mention I was a bit of a wallflower and definitely an introvert to begin with. I was known as a pretty chill guy and either liked or at least respected by multiple social groups at my school. But I had very few close friends. However, things began to look up. My mom worked front desk at a luxury waterfront hotel in town and set me up in the biggest suite in the whole damn place for the night. She and my dad cooked a bunch of food for the party, bought me an ice cream cake, told me not to drink alcohol or trash the place, and left for the rest of the night. One positive side effect of being a studious goody two-shoes during high school is that your parents apparently trust you. But still, when I invited all my friends to my 18th, I expected to have fun, and for there to be a decent turnout, but that it would ultimately be a modest and forgettable party for a modest and forgettable guy. Instead, absolutely everybody showed up. Not everyone could stay long, but everyone came by to celebrate. We hung out in the pool, chatted, and generally had a great time. My friends surprised me with a ton of gifts and a huge communal birthday card made from a poster paper folded in half with the theme of. Now that you're 18, you can enjoy. Taped to the center of the card was a Playboy centerfold with the word corn, written under it. There was also a box of cigarettes, a cigar, a pack of condoms, a military application, a voting ballot, etc. I was almost crying by the time I finished going through it, because besides being hilarious, it was so thoughtful. It was so meaningful to me to realize that my friends cared so much even after I felt I had neglected those friendships for so long. The party went on and it was everything I could have wanted for my 18th. But of course, like any gathering of teenagers in good spirits without parental supervision, we eventually got into playing truth or dare. Even without the aid of alcohol, the topics naturally all quickly devolved into something related to doing it or nudity. Now, I was a virgin at this point, and my friends weren't the craziest bunch in school. So bisexual I more mean leaning out of PG-13 amounts of suggestive a girl got dared to give a blowjob to a hot dog. A guy got dared to strip and run outside to the outdoor pool, and back. 
etc. The energy in the room had eventually gotten pretty naughty, but it was also getting late and we had been truth or daring for a couple hours at this point. Some people had had to leave for the night and we were down to a smaller group of about 10. Of these 10 were 3 girls, and all 3 were in my opinion among the top 5 most attractive girls in my graduating class. So one of my guy friends, who was the craziest of this non-crazy bunch, decides to cap off the game with one final dare. A dare to all 3 girls that would also serve as a final birthday present for me. Now, at this point, you probably have an idea about where this is going. That idea is probably wrong. This guy dares all 3 girls to finish the last remaining slice of ice cream cake, by eating it off of my stomach without using their hands. The girls giggle, and then agree. I take off my shirt, and lie back on a huge ottoman. They gather over me and, maybe this is a wishful false memory, but I swear I remember them all saying happy birthday. Macrophage mage in unison with flirty voices before going at it. Over the next five minutes, my abs, which I thankfully had at that point in my life, thank you adolescent metabolism, experienced a symphony of icy, melty cold and warm, wet tongues, courtesy of three of the hottest girls in my class, while also being watched by several of my guy friends. I got several compliments on my abs. To date, I don't think I've ever had a stranger erotic experience in my life. I don't know if I ever will but it's certainly a fond, bizarre memory. Hey guys, are you enjoying the video? If so, please like and subscribe, as it really helps out the channel. Anyways, back to the stories. Story 4. In high school, I was dared to play gay chicken, which is where two straight guys pretend to be gay, and the first one to chicken out loses. The other guy and I are both really stubborn, and neither one of us wanted to lose. We've been married 14 years and we run a bed and breakfast in Vermont without adopted daughter. If that dude doesn't chicken out soon, I'm going to start to suspect that he's actually gay. Edit. Wow, so I posted this on my lunch break and didn't expect it to blow up. For people lurking through my post history, you're right, this story isn't fully true. I thought I'd post a joke for a couple of laughs and a handful of upvotes. I did get dared to play gay chicken in high school, and both of us realized that neither one wanted to stop which turned into a three-year relationship that ended when went separate ways after high school. I ended up marrying a woman and we recently moved to Vermont with our biological children. She runs the B&B &B while I'm at the office. If things had gone just a little differently in my life, it would have ended up just like my original post. I should have just posted the real story. And I'm sorry if the truth is disappointing to anyone. My high school boyfriend and I actually broke up in large part because of all the overt hatred and ostracism we received from our community. Back then, I never would have dreamed of 30,000 people supporting us. Thank you for your kindness. Story 5 So, I have played an unreasonable amount of truth or dare in my life. Most of it was when I was 12 and 17 but some of it continued into college and then the army. In high school one of the girls a year older than me convinced a group of us to play what she called monkey dare. All truths and dares had to be sexual in nature. You were only allowed to back out of going through with one truth or dare per game without quieting the game. That game led to me getting several blowjobs from different female friends that joined over the years as well as me getting to reciprocate and in a few cases see naked girls that I felt were way out of my league. It never advanced to people doing it on a dare, but it did lead to me having intercourse with a few of the girls that were playing at later dates. In college, we had really no see neighbors and at some point when drinking someone dared the group to drunkenly flash them. And that became a regular thing where everyone that drank with us flashed the house next door. The neighbors funnily enough became very friendly with us after this started. In the army, I was in a non-sexual marriage for a really long time until an Air Force classmate of mine played truth or dare in a group and she decided to keep the game going after. Again wasn't a dare leading to it, but that game sparked a nine-month affair with her and pushed me to leave a marriage where both myself and my wife were unhappy. That was a long time ago and I haven't really played it since. In between I learned to turn a lot of other games into drinking and stripping games. Drink and strip Wii Sports, apples to apples and never have I ever. I have always thought I was unattractive and I never really understood why people decided to play these games with me. But, only the strip and drinking games involved alcohol, never anything where people had physical contact. Story 6 One of the most awkward and hilarious stories of my life is from this dumb game. Played it in middle school with a close group of friends. I asked one of the guys who he had a crush on and he said me. Record scratch the girls and I laughed then told him he didn't actually have to confess. He was flustered and said truth or dare was sacred so he couldn't lie. We all continued to hang out and have a good time. We started playing pool. While waiting for my turn I started tickling the dude who had a crush on me. 
I tickled a loud fart out of him and he ran away to lock himself in his parents' room. He wouldn't come out for anything. So my evil best friend knocked on the door saying I agreed to be his girlfriend if he came out. So he comes out and asks me out. In proper middle school fashion I ran away and hid under his dining room table. My bestie comes over to tease me and tells me to give him a chance. At this point everyone comes over and is staring at me. So I awkwardly agree to go out with him. He became my first boyfriend through this series of unfortunate events. He asks to take me somewhere more private and we go sit in his parents' car. My other friends circle the car and start singing when the moon hits your eye. It's a big pizza pie, that's amore. I wanted to curl up under a rock and die. I avoided him like the plague for a week, then dumped him and begged to stay friends. He threw up but says it was unrelated to the breakup. And that's the tale of how my friend farted on me to ask me out. Middle school was so freaking awkward. We're still good friends to this day. He hates when I tell this story. I can't imagine why. Story 7. I've played countless times Earl and I can't think of one time where I didn't end up at least kissing a girl. A lot of crazy crap happened but the best one was the one time I played online. It was me, male, a female friend, my female best friend at the time and a male friend. We were in a call on Skype so we could see each other through our cameras. We were having fun and nothing special was happening apart from me and my female best friend flirting a bit which was normal to us. We always played around and had no boundaries in what we said to each other. The problem was that she had a boyfriend. I was good friends with him and he knew that I would never do anything with her because I'm not that type of person. He knew about most of our conversations and was always chill about it but that time he got really jealous when he found out we were playing truth or dare. He started spam calling her until she decided to add him to our Skype call to solve the situation. My best friend's sister was listening to her playing with us and told her boyfriend that we were talking about the size of her chest, which was true, oops, and other sex-related stuff, and that's why he was so mad. He didn't even listen to my explanation. He turned off the call and broke up with her which was shocking because they had been dating for three years and WTF. I've seen this girl naked dozens of times while I was at her place and she was taking a shower and dressing up. We were that close so why is he so mad about this all of a sudden? I look at my best friend on the camera and she's smiling. She didn't give a single crap and that's when it hit me. She likes me and he knows. I had never thought of her as a potential girlfriend. She was so perfect for me that I just saw her as a best friend that would have forever. Someone that would always be with me but as soon as I realized that she liked me I felt my body filling with happiness. It was like a happiness bomb exploded inside me. The next day I went to her house. We were a bit awkward because we both knew that we liked each other and it was still too early since she had just broken up with her boyfriend but I said frick it. I'm not waiting another day to be with her so we kissed etc etc and now we're close to our four year anniversary. She's still way too perfect for me but I can't complain. Story 8. It was in the fall of 2017. I just started a new course at school. It was a computer science class and that means the girl to guy ratio is probably 110. One of the three girls was just absolutely stunning to me. Unfortunately, we were on opposite sides of the classroom. To make a long story shorter, when a group assignment was given, we were allowed to pick our own groups. In this class, I had a few friends in there already. I made a group with some of them and also invited the absolutely stunning one in our group. When working on the assignment, we all talked casually. With her being in a group of all guys, she was quick to bring up her boyfriend. To me, it was game over and I decided not to interfere with her existing relationship. Since this girl was in the same major as I, we began to form a real friendship. As time went on, I found out her BF was super controlling and she was not happy. In turn, her and I began to talk more and more on Snapchat. One of our chats went like this. Her, truth or dare. Me, truth. Her, do you smoke weed? Me, every day since I've been 16. You, her, every day since I started college. Your turn. Me, truth or dare. Her, truth. Me, have you ever done anything more than weed? Her, I've drank and tried mushrooms once but I didn't have much so I don't think they worked. Me, I've never done mushrooms and I don't like drinking much but I will do it socially. But I am a big fan of LSD which I see compared to mushrooms often. Her, I never did LSD but I want to try it one day. Me, I have some on me. I dare you to split a tab with me. Her, we can do it after class. Me, where? Her, can't be my dorm. I have too many roommates. Me, I guess we can go to my house after class and wait for my parents to fall asleep to take them. Her, sounds great. Okay so some things just happened. One I am about to take a drug two times before over a four year period with a super attractive girl. Two, I don't have any LSD. Three, she has a BF. I got the LSD and the class came and she came over. We decided not to wait until my parents went to bed. 
Instead, we came up with a plan to pretend to going to a bar and coming home acting a little tipsy so no questions would be asked. We went for a walk, took the tabs an hour into it, and waited for it to start kicking in. Another hour in, we were laughing as if we were a little tipsy and decided to head back to my place. The plan worked flawless. As we waited for the trip to start, we talked about anything and everything. I told her stories about my life that I didn't share with many people. Nothing bad but I don't share much about my past because it's in the past. We decided to go for a late night walk. Everyone was asleep by now. During the walk I decided to grab her hand and hold it. She accepted it and we continued to walk for an hour or two. The LSD was started to really make us trip so we decided it was best to head back indoors and chill. I put on the Lion King and we laid in my bed. I looked at her and she looked back. I asked if it was okay to kiss her and she said what has taken you so long. One thing lead to another and we made love for hours while also tripping. I don't know how to explain it, but our bodies were connected. I felt like she could feel what I felt and I could feel what she did. I guess the only thing I could relate the feeling to is the movie Avatar when they connect with each other's hair thingy. Well, we eventually fell asleep and the next morning was crazy. She knew she had to tell EBF and we both had to go into work. I went to work and she went to go to her dorm and also into work. However, prior to going into work, she stopped at her boyfriend's house and told him what had just happened. To make things worse, she let her phone die and had not charged it yet. Now, I wish she waited to tell him with me or in a public place because he unfortunately punched her in the face upon finding out. Now with a black eye, she got out quickly and went to work. Since her phone was dead, she did not call anyone. She could have been in serious danger. Luckily she was able to get out and get to work. She was in shock and her manager could tell. The black eye only confirmed it. He called the police for her and she was able to charge her phone and contact me. They never saw each other after that and he dropped out of the college and moved back upstate. Her and I started dating that day. Today, her and I are married with a beautiful child and we just moved into our new home together. We are both working at the same company doing application development. She has finished school and I have two semesters left. We could not be happier. Story 9. Mixed theater group in high school doing an unauthorized shut-in in the theater. We stayed in the large open catwalk above the flyways where the weights and whatnot could be rebalanced. Someone had lined half of the grating with plywood and somehow lifted a couple of couches up there, but otherwise it was completely open with nowhere to hide. Most of the night was pretty mundane. A couple people making out, some nudity, etc. My friend dared this girl to make out with another girl, then later they dared him to make out with me. It continued to escalate until my friend and I had to swap blowjobs. It wasn't my first time giving head to another guy, and my friend knew that, but I wasn't out yet. We discussed it for a second and then said he'd blow me first to get it out of the way. So, he sat on the couch and I well, let him have it. He honestly complained AMD groaned so much as he touched me and tentatively licked at me, that he made it worse for himself by dragging it out. He gagged and coughed, but didn't throw up. We swapped places and I went to town, but he just wouldn't get hard. So he had the bright idea of daring the girls to 69. While they stripped and went at it on the other couch, he sat down so he could watch them and I knelt on the floor. That got him going and I finished him pretty quick then, long before the girls were done. While all this was going the 20 or so other kids cheered and watched. The girls kept at it for a while, which I guess got everybody worked up. And I guess I sort of gave myself away, as it were, because I ended up being dared to suck off three more guys before the night was done. It was fun at the time, but my friend and I were bullied about it later, but somehow everybody thought the two girls were really cool. Story 10. Long backstory but here goes. For most of high school, one of my best friends was a stereotypical mean girl. No one would say anything that she didn't fully support or agree with because this girl would ruin your social life. She was an abuser and her specialty was verbal abuse. One day, her and I were walking with a third person, a dude, and she starts to at me because I wasn't walking fast enough for her liking full on cussing me out over it. At first, I was embarrassed and tried to keep up while apologizing. It wasn't good enough for her and she kept attacking me. I was getting really sad and starting to fight tears when it suddenly dawned on me that I didn't have to listen to her bull crap. I stopped dead in my tracks, yelled that I didn't need this crap, told her to frick off, and turned around. She started screaming at me as I walked away to which I replied with a middle finger. The dude was incredibly embarrassed by her breakdown which made it that much better. So fast forward a couple months later, I survived jumping off her toxic ship, managed to make it to summer, and kind of splintered our group because a few girls got emboldened by my defiance and decided it would be better to be actual friends with people instead of pawns. We all end up at the same house party. I'm just trying to pass through a room where people are playing truth or dare, 
but in that 30 seconds a dude gets dared to kiss me. He was pretty cute but I tried to give this complete stranger an out by saying it wasn't really fair since I wasn't playing and would not be continuing the game. The guy shrugs and says I'm down if you are but no pressure. I shrugged and made out with him. Unbeknownst to me, the mean girl manufactured the whole game so she could make out with this guy. She had a couple of her friends agree to dare her to make out with him on the second turn. She was beyond pissed. The guy quit playing after our kiss and we hung out for the rest of the night which she also took offense to. But between this and the first story, she had lost a good amount of her power over everyone. I never saw the guy after that night but I'll never forget him for inadvertently dethroning that awful idiot. The guy from the backstory and I ended up dating for 5 years though. He told me that he has never been so impressed and proud as that day I stood up for myself to her. Story 11. I actually have a few. When I was in HS, I'd always go to my cousin's house to swim in her pool. A few friends from her neighborhood and church would always come too. We were all around 15 minutes 16 years old, and horny as hell. We always ended up playing truth or dare. Usually it started with the occasional feel on the outside. Then someone had to flash the others underwater. If you had goggles, you'd get to go under and take a peek. I'll list the three best things that happened to me below. 1. My cousin's neighbor was pretty cute and really shy. I found out later she had a crush on me, and that's why my cousin would dare her to do things to me. This one game, she was dared to hold my junk in her hand for the entire round. I pulled my pants down. I was soft when she first grabbed it, and to be honest, a little cold in the pool. She just had a light grip, like she was pretty embarrassed. After about two seconds of her grabbing my junk, it was hard as it had ever been. Immediately next I was dared to put my finger in her for the rest of the round while she held my junk. I had never fingered a girl, so I had no idea what to do. I just kind of put my fingers between the lips. During the next few minutes, I just kind of rub my fingers around her clit. While I do it, she's getting a tighter grip on me and starting to jack me a little. The rest of the group kept going under to watch what was going on. God I wanted to finish, but soon the round was over and we pulled our bottoms back up. Later that same round, my cousin dared her neighbor to let me put my junk in her. We obviously weren't about to have sex, I'm not sure we totally knew how. So instead, we pulled out bottoms down and just rubbed the head of my junk against her vagina for a few seconds. It didn't actually go in at all, but felt amazing. 2. Another time, a girl from our church was there. I think I was 16 and she was 15 or 16. Another guy in the group dared her to blow me, and she happily obliged. Everyone got their goggles and went underwater. I pulled down my bottoms and she went under and started sucking my junk. It lasted about 5 seconds. At some point the game ended up on the trampoline instead of the pool. It was at the back of their property line and out of view. At some point, someone dared the guys, there were two of us, to finish and let them watch. We brokered that they'd have to help. I went first. The same girl that sucked me before ended up being my partner. She jacked me off, and even stuck it back in her mouth to the applause of everyone else. I ended up finishing in her hand. The other guy ended up chickening out. Weirdly enough, my cousin got dared to do a few things to me here and there at these swim parties. I'm not sure if you guys want to hear about that though. I've always felt a little conflicted looking back on it. A lot of great memories came from those parties. 3. Finally, a couple years ago some of my family went on a trip to the mountains. Me and my male cousin shared a room with my wife and his then GF. We were drinking and ended up playing truth or dare. We did little things, like close our eyes and feel something of another person to guess who it was. Then dared for our partners to give the guys BJs under the cover. Finally, my cousin's GF dared my wife and I to let them watch me stick my junk in her. We did it, and actually ended up fricking while my cousin and his GF watched. At some point they started getting handset with each other, and later I looked and she was sucking him off while he watched us. It was hot. I came and we all kind of laughed. My wife and I walked to the bathroom to clean up and when we got back, they were just finishing up a quickie. We all passed out, but such a hot memory. Hey guys, just found out you watched till the end, that is awesome, also. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more awesome stories.